everybody in YouTube land. Today we're going to be delving into, into the top secretive world of cochineal dye. <laughs> cochineal dye is incredibly secretive. Oh my goodness, and it has a fascinating history. We're not going to go super deep into the history of the espionage associated with cochineal dye, but if you've been seeking information about cochineal, you might have noticed that it is crazy difficult to gather information about it. <laughs> it's a historic fact that it's been kept like top secret for literally thousands of years and then it's just recently been available in tiny snippets of information. Usually people want you to buy their super mega expensive uh, uh, conference or retreat or, or, or lessons in using natural dye, which is why you only get a bit of information here and a bit of information there. But I've been playing with cochineal for the last two years and I have dyed a lot of things with it. And, and I've achieved a lot of different colors out of it. Orange, purple, lilac, red. I haven't done a lot of Christmas red, uh, but you can get Christmas red out of it, um, which is that kind of fire engine red if you're not into Christmas. Um, but uh, that classic red, that Asian red, you can get out of it too. So come along with me and I will show you in 30 minutes how you can achieve all of these colors completely naturally. And um, if you live in the uh, Western Hemisphere, Southwestern uh, areas of the United States, or you're in South America, oh my goodness, you could even be harvesting your own cochineal bugs. Isn't that exciting? Really exciting. So come on, let's uh, let me let me show you everything I figured out in the last couple of years, and we'll do it. For free. Cochineal has a fascinating history, so let's sit back and get right into it. In case you didn't know, cochineal is a tiny bug. Let's just zoom in and show you how tiny it is. Here's my finger, and here is a cochineal bug body. Now, cochineal bugs can only be, you know, they're a little bit like trilobites, if you've looked into fossils, or if you're looking for a modern day something, they're sort of like those scaled pill bugs, or sometimes kids call them roly polies. They're tiny little bugs, um, with a with a hard shell on them segmented and they feed on cacti so they're generally harvested in peru but um you see how tiny that is and you can see the tiny little scales so in peru they've been used for thousands of years as a natural makeup um and also in dyes for fiber now they what makes them work is carminic acid. Their little shells have carminic acid in them. And you'll notice this one dropped on a little drop of water and immediately the red carminic acid started coming out. Now this is very easy to alter with pH, which makes it a perfect dye. All you need to do is add acid to turn that red into orange. But I have discovered that if you add uh, copper to this, it will turn it uh, purple. And if you leave your, if you do too much copper, it'll go into a true ink black. Um, I accidentally did that once. So, so I ran into the house to show you the kind of purple you can make. This is a Nuno felted dress. This is the back side of the Nuno felted dress. But um, look at that gorgeous purple. That's a little something. Uh, I actually submitted this to this piece for a runway show. Um, but let me show you the edge, the exposed part that um, is on the, uh, this is Habote silk. Isn't that gorgeous? 
that was made um, putting the cochineal in a copper pot. Now down here is my copper pot. Oh, it actually has some water in it. Remember I told you this is a dry sink. So uh, I just put this pot underneath that sink. So I put this directly on my stove and uh, I had added some vinegar to it, which caused, you see how it's brighter right there on the edge? There's some green in there right now because of the previous dye, but do you see how it's brighter right there? That's because it had acid in it. And actually, I better pour this out. I'm going to pour this into my plastic thing underneath it. Um, I really don't want a bunch of acid in that pot because it'll, con it, it'll eventually make a hole in my pot. So if you're going to use a pot, be careful that you don't just set it aside for months and months with acid in it because you will get a hole in your pot. Um, but that's another very ancient way of mortiting while using metals is to use a metal pot. This is the piece that that uh, that was and not not this one but this one. This is the purple. Um, and this is all crocheted on here. So that was fun, fun, fun. But I also noticed originally when I did that I strained this um, the cochineal bugs with a metal strainer and I walked away and that's what initially started changing some of that dye. So you don't you want to be cautious and probably always stick to using um, stainless steel. Stainless steel is non-reactive, so it's never going to change the color uh, of your dye. But um, that's how I ended up getting that black, is I'd put it in a pot just in the strainer and walked away. And then when I came back in the morning, it was black. So, um, so I'm going to put this in here to strain out some of my bugs in my fluid and this is just a, an old camp percolator so let's see now that I've got the bugs in there and I can pour out my um, just my pure dye solution here's the thing you're gonna get an enormous amount of dye out of these bugs I mean it's like insane isn't that beautiful? So when I first bought some cochineal, it, I bought two ounces. I only used like a half of it, and I got like five dye pots out of it. I did all of that silk. I did all, all of the wool on top of it. I did um, a bunch of other stuff, and it just lasted and lasted. The only reason I bought some more is because I lost it somewhere down in the basement. But... <laughs> It's amazing stuff. You will get uh, just tons and tons and tons of dye out of it. So let's take you out of here. Now to start using this dye, you are going to need to heat it up, which is why I have it in my little designated crock pot. But because this is an all-natural, non-mordant using dye, if you wanted to, you could use this in stuff that you make food with and it would be completely safe. It might stain your pot um, but it'll be fine. I have a little green in there stained from, uh, oh I believe that's willow but uh, I like to use a lot of natural dyes and this is just one of my absolute favorites. So we're just gonna go ahead and keep straining off the bugs and keep adding it to our dye pot. Now if you want to make this go faster you can apply heat when you're straining but you really don't have to you could just wait overnight, but I'm just dying to see how much we get out of these bugs. Now, a lot of people uh, have the bugs soak overnight, but if you're in a hurry, as people often are, you can just, I mean, you can just put them over light heat, and uh, the more heat you apply, the more the acid will come out of them. So just for fun, with these other bugs that I still have uh, in my in my beaker, We'll add some water, and then we'll show you how you can make orange out of them. So I've got my red already. See how instantaneous that is? I need to save these bugs, make sure they don't get uh, wasted. But um, let's just go ahead and add a little bit of white vinegar and see how that alters the color. See? 
Isn't that super cool? Now I've got a very nice orange. Isn't that the coolest thing? Now it's a reddish orange, but it's, it's just... Let's put it against the white so you can really see it. It's just a beautiful orange. All right, here we go. We're going to add, start adding some copper. Now see, the copper is blue. So when you add that to your red, you're going to get some purple. I guess that's why it worked. I just did it because I just wanted to play with my... Um, oh, it does. Oh, it's working beautifully uh, for you. See that beautiful purple? Isn't that gorgeous? So we've got beautiful purple. I mean, it's like grape purple. I might have to dilute that a little bit um, with more red because that's a little bit more than I want. Um, so maybe we'll see. This is so confusing when I have this sink over here because I keep thinking that it's attached to the water and it's not. Um, so I keep I keep trying to like turn the faucet on and I can't. But I'll go get more water and put that in there. Okay, I actually forgot about this dye pot until <laughs> just like 30 minutes ago. I was like, ah, I got a dye pot in the, in the shop because I ran off and did kid stuff. But I put this silk in here. And so now, it's a lovely shade of purple. And I will go ahead and let it dry on here. I also, I'll have to spread that out later. Um, well, I'll spread it out now. I also put some cotton in there. Did you know that cochineal works on cotton too? It does, because it's an additive dye. So anything that's additive um, will work like that. So. On cotton, uh, it's a little less, this is cotton gauze, it's a little less predictable, because uh, this is uh, uber clean. I actually had a little bit of, um, I actually had a tiny bit of um, some other leaf stuff on here that just because it was down in my shop, so where I had tannins, it's actually a darker purple, which is kind of cool. But this is all going to get Nuno felted anyways, so that'll all be fine. So, so I here I have my um, my silk and my cotton from last night, and I'm just going to get real close to the microphone and speak to you because um, my microphone broke. And it's not working and there's lawn mowing going on in the background again so I want to be sure you hear me and it's not irritating hey by the way if there's anything that I could ever improve on in my videos please message me because I want to make this a wonderful viewing experience for you and sometimes things do not jump out at me like this that little beep okay so this was 30 minutes in the cochineal bath that was modified by copper. Again, if you're modifying with copper, that is not safe to be in your food pot. So have a designated pot for that. I love this so much that I decided that I would take my white uh, harem pants and dip those in there. But then I thought, okay, so I have had these pants in here for an hour and this is nowhere near the amount of color I want on here I mean it's pretty ish but I I'm just craving something more saturated and oh by the way it looks like my um my stuff is still staying on there my resist so that's good but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use some of my uh, cochineal in here and it's going to go on top of here, and I'm okay with that. These might end up way more red. Ooh, look, there's a little orangey in there, isn't it? Ooh, but it's fun, fun, fun. Oh, wow. Look at that. There was just a tiny bit of uh, vinegar in this. Itty bitty mount. We'll just put that in there. Ooh, ah. Uh, Ooh, yes! Look at that! 
Oh, now that's the shade I'm looking for. Oh, how fun. You see why you have to do this, you guys? There's really nothing more exciting than creating dye from natural stuff. I mean, the joy that you get from it is really cannot be compared to it. I just don't know what it is. It's Remember that great color I got on these cotton uh, harem pants yesterday and I was super excited when I poured that color in? Well, guess what? All of that did not stick. <laughs> it was a waste. Some of it sticked, the amount that had the coffer in it. But when I went back and read about using cochineal on cotton, I found out that it's kind of important to mordant. Remember when we talked about some of the gauze that I did that looked better in some spots and I said it was because of the tannin? Yep, come to find out if you're using cochineal on cotton, if you want to get a vibrant color, you're gonna need to use tannin. So I have here some oat galls that I collected uh, last year. And I just never got around to pulverizing them. I just can't see buying pulverized oat galls when they are in abundance in my neighborhood. So that's what we're about to do. We're going over here and we're pulverizing some oak galls. Okay, we are going to take some of these galls and we're pulverizing them. You see? It's not rocket science. It's just local oak galls plus a sledgehammer. We're gonna need to weigh our fabric and we're gonna do 8% of our cotton fabric. 8% of that weight needs to be the weight of our oak galls. So let's get measuring. Okay, we've got it zeroed out. We have 4.6 ounces. Let's make it easier on ourselves and change the unit to grams. Okay, basically we have 110 grams. So we, <laughs> as it moves around, so we need to get what is 8% of 110%? Well, 10% of that is 11 grams. So we'll just call it 10 grams. We need 10 grams of oak galls. Because uh, if we go a little bit over, that's not going to be, that's not going to be too bad. Always better to have more than less. And if when we're measuring and it's a little bit less, then we'll be like, yay, huzzah, it's 8%. <laughs> All right, let's see how much that is. Ah, perfect. A little bit over, that's okay. So we'll go ahead and start um, heating that up and preparing a dye bath for it. So this is super fascinating. I um, put this in the dye bath of the... Um, the oak galls for a while and then I just now just poured in in this hot water the alum acetate and woo Nelly look at that it's starting to react um, in there so I thought woo wow oh you know what it's reacting with the dye that's in there there was a tiny bit of cochineal in this pot and wow did it turn <laughs> did it bring out that color um, so this has got to um, 
That's so interesting. I scrubbed and scrubbed this pot, but there was still some cochineal in here, and it just must be pulling it right out of the pot and into into the water. Um, so, anywho, we're going to um, let this uh, alum acetate, which was a percentage of the overall weight. I I believe I put in like twelve percent of the of the weight. But if you're if you're concerned about your measurements and you're very precise, go over to Mewa, uh, dot. I think they're probably org. Just Google the capital letters M-A-I-W-A. -A. Fabulous website. They have all kinds of dye recipes on there for free. And of course they sell natural dyes. Now if you're not in Canada, it's crazy expensive. Um, so you'll probably want to buy your products elsewhere. But... Um, if you are in Canada, cha-ching, it is, it is an amazing deal for you because you can get all kinds of stuff right there in your own country. And let this sit for 45 minutes and fully absorb that alum acetate. Then we're going to play with it in the crock pot. We're going to add some, some um, cream of tartar in there. Cre now, cream of tartar shifts that color a lot um, into red so I don't know we, well we might play with it I don't really I'm not super duper duper wanting red but I do want to show you guys what kind of red can be achieved and stuff so maybe we'll see what happens we'll play with it we'll play it by ear but now we know if we want to work with cotton we definitely need to be doing tannin plus alum acetate or tannin plus alum sulfate plus alum acetate and then into the cochineal and then that will be way way more permanent when you're working with cellulose fibers and that's probably why when you look on information for cochineal they say Hey, if you're a beginner, just go ahead and work with silk and wool and protein fibers. Because you start getting into cotton and cellulose fibers, and it gets a little bit tricky. There is definitely some preparation that has got to be done if you're going to do it. And and have it stay. Now, that light lilac that I showed you before, I mean, that had been synthropoled and washed and dried. So it did stay. It was color fast, but it just wasn't as vibrant as I wanted. So that's why we're messing with it some more. So now we've taken the cotton pants out of their tannin bath and out of their alum acetate bath and we put them back in the cochineal dye bath. While that was happening, I went and took the silk hankies and I rinsed them in rainwater to see if any bleed back would happen and bleed back is when um you know the ink that you or the dye that you put in there bleeds out um will actually bleed back is when it bleeds out and then goes back into the dye but i wanted to see if any bled it, and just to see if this was going to be permanent so there i've got a little bit of dye that came out of the watt out of uh out of the silk but not a lot and after washing this quite a bit rinsing it and rinsing it going then my silk is still this beautiful uh, rose color and I could modify that but I want to use it for needle felting because this is a great color let me show you uh, up closely a little bit each one of these silk hankies is extremely thin. Um, this is an, oh gosh, I think this is like an ounce of, of fiber. So it's quite, it's just hanky after hanky after hanky. So when I pull them apart, they're, I mean, they're just paper, paper thin. And so they're great for needle felting. And they're also great for wet felting. But, um... I want to just open those up and let them dry um, 
and uh, and then I'll use those for a needle felting project that I have coming up here because I'm going to be working on some faces and I think that would be a great color for lips and cheeks and stuff and and will allow me to add multiple layers and really get a nice thing going um, because you know you want to add just a little bit of color when you're needle felting. Now this is not silk, but I think silk would be lovely, wouldn't it? And then it would just really give it a, a natural look. Um, my needle felt, and what I'm needle felting is much smaller than that uh, head that I just showed you, so I'll really need some fine fibers. So these are my pants from the Cochineal. Wearing them today. Pretty cool, eh? In conclusion, you can make a vast array of beautiful dyes from one source, the cochineal bug. <clears throat> you can modify your dye to get deep, deep purples. You can modify it without metals to get beautiful oranges. You can do almost nothing to your dye bath and get a lilac. This is alpaca, cotton, Romney wool, silk, more silk, um, and just a lot of uh, different wools over here. This is not cochineal right here. This is something else. But uh, all the purples that you see in here, that is cochineal. And, and here's even some more cotton I put in this one. So um, you can even get sort of a pinky color from it. Also what we learned is if you were going to use any form of cellulose fiber you're gonna want to use some tannins like these oak galls. You can purchase all kinds of already powdered stuff uh, all over the internet. Lots of places you can get it or you can make your own because it's super fun to make your own. Um, when I mordanted my fiber, I used my homemade copper right here. You can skip the copper and go straight to an alum bath using alum acetate or alum sulfide. Alum acetate is preferred when you're using cellulose fibers like cotton and hemp. Anytime you use a mordant, it's going to make your fiber more color fast. But as we've shown, you can do it without. You're just not going to have near as bright a color or strong and intense a color without it. But go ahead and do whatever floats your boat and uh, whatever you feel comfortable with and for sure whatever you have. Okay, use what, what you have the most. So thanks for stopping by. You know I always love to hear from you guys, and I always love to hear your comments and your suggestions. And if you have anything that you noticed um, that wasn't quite right, please let me know, because I'm really striving to make an amazing video for you all. Um, if you want to know, uh, if you want to see more stuff coming up, then go ahead and click subscribe. If you click that bell notification, it'll um, notify you every time I upload something, which is going to be every Thursday, which is why I'm hurrying to do this now. So every Thursday, new videos come up. What are they going to be? Well, they're going to be dye techniques like this. They're going to be felting techniques, needle felting, wet felting, nuno felting. Um, other fiber things every now and then there might be a little bit spinning coming up in the distant future uh, unless of course you really want the spinning then we'll speed it up um, so basically I make all things fiber and I'm happy to share you know what I do with you all um, and because I love it and I think everybody should do it <laughs> shouldn't everybody do fiber arts what's your favorite fiber art by the way I am dying to know <laughs> no pun intended. What is it that brought you here? Was it dye techniques? Was it the shoes? Was it um, needle felting? I, I just really want to know uh, what it is you all are super into 
um, so that I can give you more of that. Anyways, I will talk with you all later. Thank you for coming, and have a blessed and beautiful Fiber Day.